Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Car Addiction. And, oh, man, this is going to be a tough one. This is going to hurt, hurt a lot. If this is your first time in my channel, I'm an avid financial mistake maker. If you are 21 years old and younger, stop, watch cat video, talk to your girlfriend. Uh, don't be a car enthusiast. I'm a huge Nissan enthusiast. I uh, have a couple of 300 S twin turbos, a Skyline, a MR2, etc. But today's video is for none of those. Today's video is for my daily driver. For daily, I like something reliable and not yelling out loud. So I drive a Hyundai Santa Fe. But I spec'd it out very well the way I liked it. I wanted a 2-liter turbo with an all-wheel drive system. And I didn't want it to pay for the premium package where, uh, you know, you got all the bells and whistles, the, the navigation system and whatnot. And I'm just not a big fan of all these bells and whistles. Because in my opinion, those are just something that will break. So I wanted something with the least amount of features with what I wanted. So I have a Hyundai Santa Fe Sport with all-wheel drive and almost no options that's exactly what I wanted how I wanted I waited so long for a used vehicle uh, with that spec to pop up when it finally did I went out and bought it today your boy your boy figured out a way to break the all-wheel drive system I have said it I broke it and I'm gonna go to 13 Motorsports. I talked to Luke, we went back and forth many times and we decided it's not worth the money to keep the all-wheel drive system and fix all these parts. We would just rather drop the transfer case, drop the rear drive shaft, drop the part that's worn out and uh, call it a day. We're just gonna keep it front wheel drive and unfortunately that's how I'm gonna have to live. Let's see what I screwed up. A couple of days ago, I saw this on MR2 page. The owner was looking to see what kind of money he could get for this. Probably not this person. Yeah. Sure? I, even, I even messaged him. Yeah. Derek, yeah. Derek, yeah. yeah okay. I think he put for 25. Yeah, he's got his like rebuilding the motor now. So. <laughs> what did he do? Back. Huh? Didn't he? Didn't you put a Gen 3 motor in it recently? Not recently. Um, right? last year we took it out. This year we took it out again. Because he was tracking it, right? Yeah. Yeah. He was yeah. So. Ah, that's the bad boy. That's the good part. Um, oh. We're not putting this back in. Okay. But the bad section is is in there. Yeah. Oh my God! It's supposed to be teeth in there, right? It's totally stripped. Yeah. This area is supposed to, it's smooth. <laughs> oh it's God. pretty, well, it's pretty smooth, yeah. <laughs> so that noise wow. you were hearing is just the, yeah, the it's slipping. lines like rubbing against there. Yeah. And then it should look like, you know, the inverse of this. So, um, I can find this part and that part, uh, directly from Korea. Mm -hmm. And the guy said $260 US shipped to me. That's really good. That's which, a really good price. Which part? The tran the case. No. Um, you have to open it up and. Well, this, this part is okay. It's the part that we need is in the is in the transmission. You see, even this is not okay. It's well, it's not. Yeah, you're right. Like it's not. It's it's definitely worn down yeah. a little bit. Like you can see that little step right yeah, there. Yeah. But that one is nothing that, in there. Yeah. Like and that that was why I was like, this is worst case because you know if there was some kind of clip here and we can pull this out. You can't. You can't, yeah. We um, there is over. another guy in Australia who did this job and he said he was lucky enough that he had warranty in it. Mm, okay. It's a 22 hour job. Pull the tranny. Pull, pull the, the tranny, you pull the tranny apart. It makes sense. And I'm not doing it. No, I don't think it's worth it. I mean, the car is not brand new. You know, we'll just, we're going to leave this out where the axle actually engages into the final drive is, yeah. is here. So where that uh, broken part is, is probably around here somewhere. Okay. So we're just going to remove the transfer case and make it two wheel drive permanently. Weight reduction. Yeah. I'll just leave that out. I don't know if the graph guys will take the other one back. There you go. I can call them. Maybe or yeah. at least give you a credit or something. But yeah. Yeah, you could sell this and sell that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever the next proud owner of this vehicle is. Yes. 
we'll have them with it. Because I mean, real like realistically, you could just put that in there. It just wouldn't do anything. It's but it's, it's, it's not really worth your time, my time, yeah, or worth it. the wait, really. You want to just take it out? Two wheel drive. I'll just because <sighs> originally, like we we put it on the lift, and um, first the the guy that was working on it, Geo, he drove it. He came back. He said it it has a slight vibration, so we put it up here. And we'll usually try to drive it on the lift, yeah, okay. right? And then you know try to slow down the front wheels to engage the rear, but nothing, nothing. was happening. Yeah. And then as he started driving faster, I started to hear a noise coming from the transfer case. Yeah. Um, and so, I it, mm -hmm. uh, from the video that I watched yesterday, uh, the way this system works is that drive is always engaged. So regardless yes. of the rear wheel being engaged or not, the drive shaft will always spin. Always spinning. It was not. It was not. So mm -hmm. that was the problem. What triggers the four wheel on and off is the coupling in the back. Yeah, so the Vesky's coupling is, is back here. Yeah, so this, I had it replaced under warranty. Mm -hmm. I had a problem with it. This has a sticker on it somewhere, and that had the same type of sticker that looked kind of new. You got this brand new? No. Okay. So I got this uh, 79,000 kilometers, mm -hmm. and I bought this knowing it had a problem. Okay. Because I bought this from a Ford dealership, mm -hmm. and they didn't know for some reason that Hyundai had 100,000 kilometer warranty. Oh, okay. So I bought this cheap. Okay, so you bought it cheap. New I, I literally drove from the Ford dealership to the Hyundai dealership and okay. I told them this is the problem. They act, actually replaced this, the the diff, uh, the drive shaft. Yeah, like I posted a little video of it yesterday and I got some messages of people really? saying like, oh, this is a year 2015 or whatever. And I, and I didn't respond to any of it yet, but I, I'm assuming this is like a common thing. Sounds like it. Well, there's one video, the Australian guy, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll send you the video. He was very detail about it everybody else didn't have a good video okay but okay. he did say that this is a problem yeah, a couple hours so the, the one of the, the big problem that we had was the uh, axle that we it seized into the bearing oh so no. that's why we took the whole thing out as an assembly because it's it's like literally seized in there and like if we're not replacing the bearing trying to get it out of there you're gonna hey. need to replace it <laughs> so i just told uh Jill, like just leave yeah, it as of well since you're there uh check the the tie rods okay okay Sometimes in the highway when I hit a bump, uh, these were recently done. Okay. This is probably my fourth set. Oh wow. I don't know. Sometimes the steering feels a little weird. Mm -hmm. on... Well, we're going to have to align it anyway, so we'll just do like a four wheel alignment if it Well, if you are aligning it, I might just get your tire up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The it's, outers? Because these are, these are original. Oh, they're original. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I have never done it before. Probably needs to get done Okay, so get the two outers. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to gonna have to align we're, it, we're you might as well. Yeah. It seems open. It doesn't look too bad, so we should be able to get the back freed up. And... Okay, cool. But yeah, I guess that explains it now that you told me you were towing with this thing. <laughs> well, I towed a lot of stuff, but yeah. Xterra was the only one that, you know, passed its uh, towing capability. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why they say, like, it's not a good idea to tow stuff with, like, this type of four-wheel no. drive system. Because you have some weak link, which apparently... Yes, doesn't. this is no way considered a heavy-duty. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, when I had my Xterra, I towed another Xterra in a trailer with an Xterra, and that was like probably 2,500 pounds over the weight limit. Mm -hmm. Never had any problem. Mm -hmm. A little bit overbuilt, maybe. Yeah, and this one, it is good for 35, Xterra is about 42. Yeah, like this is, usually you would see this coupling in, on the transaxle, not back here, mm -hmm. or built into the transaxle, like um, like the older Toyotas. Yes. This coupling is in inside, inside the, internal, the transaxle. And like, they really don't, break though it's 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 interesting but now that you said you were towing something that makes a lot of sense i would just like i took it apart and i was like it would have made sense to me if i was going to like chintz out on the material i would have done it here instead of in the transmission yeah yeah the oil that came out was it really, nasty it was pretty nasty i changed the transmission oil twice smell it oh my god oh, oh, oh my <laughs> god rough, right? that's bad <laughs> i changed the transmission oil twice and both the times when it came out, it was just nasty. From the, the transmission? Yeah. Not, yeah. not the diff. The I trans changed the diff oil once. Hey, but morning well. Morning well. But the transmission oil twice. Yeah. So Luke's been working on this E30 M3. This custom exhaust thing looks so good. Ooh, yeah. That's the dump type. I don't know if you guys can see. You should definitely talk to the owner about replacing the radiator. It's tiny. Ooh, they look delicious. So, as you guys heard from Luke, uh, I'm gonna go back to two-wheel drive. Man, I waited so long to get this trim on this uh, Santa Fe because 
it's the two liter turbo all wheel drive with the basic trim because people usually whenever they order these vehicles that's eric usually when people order this vehicle they will go with the the top end limited trim or something like that but i didn't want it the navigation and all the belts and the whistles ah uh, well back to two wheel drive life well a lot of things coming in this channel hit the subscribe button and bell notification and all right so it is the next day because uh i don't know how uh, 13 motorsports pulled it over um, they finished the car and like after they've diagnosed it which took most of the time and in terms of deleting the all-wheel drive system they did it in a day wow all right i'm just gonna show you how uh, uh things are looking like so on my dash the vehicle is on because you know i'm warming it up it's a uh, little chilly outside it's about minus one degree with the wind chill minus five i have a check engine light i have a power steering light all-wheel drive light traction control abs and hill descent now one of the uh, speed sensor i believe the front passenger side speed sensor um, got damaged when they were working in the car and that's why i have this traction control abs and hill descent and the check engine light is also for that uh, sensor I'm not certain about the power steering sensor because there are a couple of places where I read because this is an electronic power steering this is not a traditional uh, this is not a traditional fluid driven power steering the power steering it works in combination with the all-wheel drive system ABS ECS and a bunch of other systems because it right now it can't detect the all-wheel drive system there is a chance that's why this power steering uh, sign is on neither when I press this button usually it changes the moods it's not doing it either or this is on because this wheel speed sensor is not working it's not detecting all four it's only detecting three and the other thing is yesterday when i took it off for a spin the steering was extremely soft like a little bit of movement the vehicle was darting left and right it was extremely soft extremely sensitive and it was kind of hard to drive uh, and after this light came on the steering got a lot harder a lot harder than what i used to remember how it was but you know what, I'm not going to complain about a hard steering because at least it's easier to drive. But in no cases, the steering feel is what it used to be before. That's my observation at this point. I'm going back to 13 Motorsports again because he just wanted to see what this problem is. And another problem is when I'm driving, if I let go of, let's say, you know, you're on the gas and you let go of the gas, it almost feels like the vehicle is transmission braking, which is what I want to show it to Luke. And let's see what he says about it. I don't want to do it, but I have a feeling I have to put the all-wheel drive system back in because the rest of the system is too complicated that it doesn't work well without the all-wheel drive system in the all-wheel drive car. And putting that all-wheel drive system back in is going to be very, very, very expensive, which I'm not interested or looking forward to do at this point. But let's see, uh, let's see what he has to say. Stay tuned.